welcome to Once More With Feeling, Golden Grey, the newest album from Baroness. So, this is another one of my... I have no previous experience of the band. I just picked them on a whim, and because of the fact that they're an independent label, it seemed like a good idea, given what happened with the Ramstein review last time. Um, on that note, if you happen to have any requests for albums that are Universal Music, gr Universal Music Group related, those videos will only be uploaded in their entirety to um, Facebook and other places like that, because YouTube has just become a wasteland for any sort of, you know, counter-copyrights. None more for that. Now this is another instance of me going in relatively blind. I listened to a couple of the tracks from the album that they released on YouTube, and I'd listened to one or two other tracks from previous albums. I was really intrigued. I decided, yeah, I'm definitely going to give this a listen. Pre-ordered it, and I really enjoyed it. I was a bit daunted by the number of tracks in terms of reviewing it, because it's 17 tracks, but fortunately six of them are instrumentals that are used to sort of bridge the gaps between the songs and give a really good through line, sort of psychologically and... The whole idea behind the album, at least as far as I could take it, is that this is an exploration of sort of like mental and emotional health, uh, both the experiences of the singer and friends and family, and how they deal with it, and the approaches are... It's very obviously written from the perspectives of people who understand the difficulties of mental health right from the get-go with Front Toward Enemy, which is basically sort of a mission statement of the album proper and essentially presents us with this whole idea that we're going to be looking at the various psychological, emotional issues that Singer, his friends and family face, regardless of the potential for disaster and sort of the risks of ostracism that could be dealt with. It's a very powerful opener and really gets you into gear with what you're going to be dealing with. These are heavy subjects and we're not going to treat them with oven gloves, we're going to just go full force and look at this. There are periods where it lets up in terms of how full force the music is, but it doesn't let up in going, these are weighty matters. You might initially see the following track, I'm Already Gone, as just your typical um, breakup song, but it's actually much more elaborate in that it discusses the fact that it's going into the fact that you've got these mental health problems and they're causing the breakdown, and at the same time you've got the fact that there's a desperate attempt to maintain that relationship even though it is breaking down. It's kind of in the same vein as, it's sort of, if you like, it would be the preview to something I can never have. With I'm Already Gone, you're, you've got the lead up to the relationship ending and the recognition that they were just going through the mo motions. And something I can never have is that reflection on the fact that they were going through the motions and the relationship was actually destructive to both of them. That can hit home for quite a few people, myself included. Seasons, um, 
this felt much like they were going into discussing the idea of SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder, and how that can, dependent on upon what time of year it is, that can dramatically affect how you are you are mentally. You have this whole, uh, at various points you've got the guitar solos and the drum work which really help to emphasise the idea of spiralling and cycling emotional spectrums and that leads into the first instrumental which kind of feels like a good tail off and through line into the next song Tourniquet which is a much more radio friendly song I will admit because it's not as full force but lyrically I would be very you know the I can imagine this whole album because of YouTube's recent ridiculous standards this whole album being flagged um, Tourniquet is very much a good sort of reflection on its basically this idea that you are putting on a brave face you're hiding behind this facade that you are mentally and emotionally okay And it's very good. Uh, John Dyer Dia Baisley is presenting it's sort of a crack in the facade presented. I didn't realise this the first time listening, but what it does is present through showcasing each of the uh, each of the band members' talents. You know, you've got really solid guitar work, the drums are very powerful, the bass really drives things forward. Everything is very crisp and whilst it's a more downplayed song, it doesn't... more downplayed in ter terms of tone, it doesn't shy away from really giving you I an idea of what these people are capable of. As such, it paints this very effective concept of the circle of support that someone with mental health problems needs. And I didn't realise, it didn't click for me until a couple of further listen-throughs, but that really works very well for me. And we've got it played out with the second, with the second instrumental, Anchor's Lament, which, again, these instrumentals work well as sort of connective tissue and also chapter breaks. So we're getting this idea that every few songs is a new chapter, a new discussion. And that's what a lot of, when you're dealing with mental health problems, that's what it often feels like, that you're having to go through new chapters of your life and understanding both yourself and the world around you and how it's affected you. And Anchor's Lament leading on to Throw Me an Anchor, which that's basically a stripping away of the tourniquet. as completely removing the facade that's coming up front and saying I need help, I need someone to keep me grounded, I need the support that you can provide. The whole idea of this desperation is emphasised by the chaotic nature of how the instruments play. There, There's a discordant nature but at the same time, it all cohesively works. And of course, from that, next we've got I Do Anything. And that's, I, I'll admit, that was the moment where I really clued in to where it was sort of like, oh, 
this guy gets it. This guy knows what it is, what it's like to deal with mental health problems because it's basically the discussion of doing, saying that you'd do anything to be okay. Saying that you'd absolutely, you would find any means, you'd talk to anyone, you'd get whatever medication, you'd find whatever it takes to be okay. What it is, in, like, you'd look at the title and initially you'd think, oh, this is just, um, just your standard, I'd do anything to be with that particular person, but no. That is far, far from the truth. What it is, is he's saying through stripped down pained vocals. Uh, and when I say pained, I, I mean you actually feel the emotion coming through in every word. He is saying that depression is not just sadness. It's a this is basically him going, this feeling persists and it makes me unable to, to use a quote from a college professor who is far more educated on these matters than me. This illness is making it impossible for me to appreciate sunsets. I do That, that is what really made, this song really made me go, oh, that's what this album is. Like, the first few songs I was sort of like, okay, I can see some of the, sort of, the mental health discussions, but it was really when we got to I'd Do Anything that it made it click that the singer himself it, it it was coming from the perspective of the singer himself as opposed to just him making observations. And then um, we get another instrumental, very cool, um, playing out and really nicely bringing things down. Blankets of Ash. Uh, that, one, that one I'd say very good if you're looking for sort of stuff to soundtrack things with. Emmet Radiating Light. Now that song feels very much like a sort of drawing influences from Boingo era, Oingo Boingo, specifically Mary and Can't See, parentheses, useless. And also mixing with sort of things like Radiohead. Um, it's got this strange, unnerving feeling about it that really brings to mind sort of the feeling of after the bombs have fallen, the kind of deadness that that whole concept can bring, but also when you take it into context with the rest of the album, you can imagine it being sort of a my mental health problems have brought about this absolute destructive wasteland and as a consequence, there's no one around who will countenance me, who will consider anything that I have to say. From there, we've got Cold-Blooded Angels, which, now that I think about it, you could interpret it as sort of... We're presented with this idea that mental health professionals are purely going to help, but at the same time, you know, they, they've got this, um, they're almost painted as angels, but at the same time you've got to deal with the fact that they're meant to be cold and detached. The song has a very sort of Anathema's Weather Patterns album feel about it, where it's sort of, it starts downplayed and then gradually builds and builds into an explosive 
oh dear god, what is happening to me kind of feel. There's also sort of the reflection on the idea of um, those who've come into your life who you see as beautiful and breathtaking, but them, the memories of them are too painful and actually cause you even more mental anguish and you just want to completely forget them. And the song Questions is a frustrated questioning of how you can survive with the memories of them. One of my favourite songs on the album, partly because of how I relate it to Anathema, because Weather Systems is one of my favourite albums of Anathema. So... Then you've got Crooked Mile, which is the next instrumental. It's very demented and really quite intriguing. I, I quite like what's going on with that. Broken Halo, that kind of feels like it's a reflection of a lot of the other concepts and aspects of the rest of that the album. A lot of the musicianship, you've got a lot of refrains that turn up. Um, there's a lot of motifs that are utilised and you're able to go, oh yeah, that was from track one, that was from that was from Tourniquet, that that one I heard bits of in Throw Me an Anchor. And it really gives you this idea that we're going through this journey, seeing where the singer is coming from and analysing with him how to experience life and improve on things, basically. Um, and it's also sort of, you know, you go through these experiences, you feel like a fallen angel, and you're trying to resolve that with sort of how you can improve, how you can rise again through both platonic and romantic relationships, um, especially romantic, um, how, how you can use how you've been in those relationships and improve. Next you've got Can Obscura, that's one, that's another um, instrumental. That feels like it's drawing influences from Primus mixed with the Distillers. Now I know what you're thinking, that sounds like a really weird mix, but I really like that. It's this strange, nutsy, you're going, okay, so what's going on here? Okay, I, I'm liking what you're doing. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I'm liking it. Borderlines, uh, that's, that's another one that um, a lot of people have been questioning sort of how you could interpret that. I personally feel that, that it's pretty blunt force. It's about borderline personality disorder. Um, this is coming off of knowing people with borderline personality disorder and how it affects them and it definitely feels like a discussion of those sorts of concepts and how it can be very destructive. There's this interesting sort of static build near the end, which definitely feels like they're doing a musical representation of what it's like for the psyche to break down when someone is going through bad periods. And you've got that continued with the last instrumental, Assault on East Falls, and that sort of builds and builds on that whole breakdown of the psyche. If we're to take the very literal understanding of the term psychedelic, which if you break it down, psyche delune, which is literal translation means mind revealing, then that definitely fits into that sort of concept. We are getting a revelation of the artist's minds. And finally, we've got Pale Sun. Now, that feels sort of like a drawing on the influences of bands like The Doors and Pink Floyd, that sort of era of music, and giving it a new sound and take. It's 
it very much feels like a deliberate break from the sounds of the rest of the album. Almost like we're getting sort of a final glorious release from the mental health problems and he's finally finding his grounding, his centre, his support circle, which finally giving him that freedom to be able to recognise all the problems and not necessarily deal with them, but definitely cope with them. He's finding a way to release all the self-hatred, all the self-doubt, let it wash over him and through him, and turn to face it, and finally be able to release a defiant scream right at the end. It's very cathartic, you're finally feeling right in the centre, in the same place as the singer, and getting just a full idea of what he's been striving for. Overall, this album, I'd say definitely go get it. You can get it in Google Play, iTunes, um, you, you can stream it on Spotify. I bought it on Google Play and I don't regret it. These guys definitely support them. They they deserve every penny. You can buy the album physically. I fully recommend it. This album is definitely one that needs to be listened to. It's talking about the stuff that needs to be talked about, which these days is very difficult to find in music. Overall, I give this album a 4.5 out of 5. It's definitely gold. No grey.